and welcome to another session of class 9th biology. Yes guys, we are already done with the first chapter of biology, the fundamental unit of life cell. Yes, and I hope you all are clear about cells now. So today in this session, we are going to discuss the second chapter tissues. Guys, 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 this is going to be a very important chapter for you. It has got number of concepts in it. So, but initially you will feel a bit confusing, but slowly and gradually it will be easier for you. Yes, so listen carefully, pay attention what I am saying here. Yes, guys, so let's enter into tissues. So before it, I hope you all understood the lesson cell. Okay, I will begin with the beginning of the cell. Yes. Cell, what was it? There what we read. Cell is the, cell is the basic unit of life. Or cell is regarded as the smallest unit of every organism. Yes, smallest unit of every organism. Whether it may be plant, animals or microorganisms, all are made up of the smallest unit called cell. Yes, you are clear about that? Now, when we are making a team, yes, when we are making a team, what does a team mean? Yes, making a group. Yes, when we are making a group of some cells. Yes, when we are making a group of some cells, but condition should be there. The cells should be of similar in structure. Means a group of similar structure cells. Understood? A group of, a group of cells which are similar in structure and they should perform a particular function. Yes? How will you make a group? Yes, how will you make a, uh, we make a group of ninth class students. Means only ninth class students. Likewise, a group of cells of similar in structure. The cells which are basically same in structure. And the cells which perform a particular same function. Yes, that group I am speaking about. Yes, a group of cells which are similar in structure and perform a particular function or same function and originated from a particular origin that is called tissues. Yes guys, tissues means a group of cells similar in structure and function is called as your tissue. Understood? What tissue means? Cells, a group of cells. When you are making a group, yes a group of cells but condition is that all the cells should be similar in structure and that cell should perform a particular same function. Yes, a group of cells similar in structure and function is called tissue. Yes, here you can see that. So, a group of cells of similar structure combined together to perform a specific function forms a tissue. Yes. Now you understood what is the definition of tissue? Nothing. Cell. We have taken a group of cells. A uh, group of cells. Group of cells means they have similar structure and they are going to perform a same function or a particular function is called tissues. Understood? Tissue. Group of cells. Tissue. Group of cell. Condition. They should be same in structure. Yes. Means for example, I have taken the cells of stomach. Yes. All the cells in stomachs are of same in size, same in structure and they will perform the same digestion function. So we are going to make a group of cells of stomach that are called tissues. Yes. We can take the group of cells of respiratory system. We can take an example of group of cells of excretory system. Yes, understood? A group of cells which should be, which must be same in structure. Remember guys, same in structure and performs a particular function is called tissue. 
group of cells which combine together to perform a particular function is called as tissue. Yes, and it's not like that that we are going to take a tissue from that animal, another cell from that animal, another cell from the nails, another cell from uh, hair and going to make a group. It will not work. That is not called tissues. Yes, the condition is there. What is the condition? It should be same in structure and perform a particular function. Yes, a group of cells combine together to perform a particular function and same in structure is called as your tissue. But what is the use of tissue guys? Why tissue is required? Yes, our cell is doing so many metabolic activities and what is the use of these tissues? Yes, 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 there is a lot of importance of the tissues. Since cell has got lots of work to do, it has to perform a number of metabolic activities. A number of metabolic activities the cell has to perform. So all the pressure is on, all the pressure is on cell. Yes, in, in general case also, when we are framing a tree, the work becomes easier or not. In the same way, we have divided the cells and made them a group. And this group is going to do respiration. This group of cells is going to do digestion. This group of cells is going to do excretion. The work will be easier. The cells will become happy. Their workload will be decreased. Yes. So that's why there is the need of tissue for division of labor. Yes. When there is a loads of labor on a particular cell. The work should be divided. Yes or no? So that's why tissue is very useful in division of labor in multicellular organism. Why? Basically in multicellular organism. Because why? Multicellular organism's body is made up of many number of cells. Yes. And these cells have to perform a number of metabolic activities. Workload on each cells become high. Yes, to divide the workload. Yes, a group is formed and that group of cells is called as your tissue and that tissue will perform a particular function. Yes, but in case of unicellular, a single cell is there and the single cell will perform all the functions. So, no complication is there in case of unicellular. Complication is there in case of multicellular organism because our body is made up of number of cells. And the cell has a loads of pressure in carrying the metabolic activities and that's why group is framed and that group of cells is called as your tissue which is going to perform a particular function. So for division of labor, for division of labor, tissue is very very important. Yes? For the division of labor to decrease the workload of a particular cell, your importance of cell is there. Yes, next. Definitely it decreases the workload on a uh, individual cells. Next. These groups of tissues. First we have taken cells, a group of cells. There is an organization. When we are making groups, there is an organization or not? I have asked you to make a group of your science books. I have asked you to make a group of mathematics books or a social books. Then it will be easier for you guys na, to easily pick a book from your uh, maths organization, from science organization. Yes or no? In the same way, when there is group, it helps in an easy organization. How? Like we have taken a group of cells and what do we name it? Group of cells, tissues. When we are taking a group of tissue, organs are formed. And we have got number of organs, heart, kidney, brain. Yes, a group of cells. Remember guys, group of cells forms tissues. A group of tissues forms organs. Yes, a group of organs forms organ system. Group of organs in the sense, stomach is there. Pancreas is there. Duodenum is there, large intestine is there, small intestine is there. All comes under digestive system or not? That organ system or not? That's what I am telling. 
so a group of organs forms the organ system and organ system a group of organ system excretory system digestive system respiratory system together combines to form the organism yes understood what is the necessity of tissues understood or not once again yes just a small summary of it what does tissue group of cells group of cells which are similar in structure and perform a particular function is called tissue done why tissue is necessary first of all for the division of labor on a particular cells yes it's called division of labor and definitely it will decrease the load on a particular cells and the most important thing is that an organization will be there what type of organization your organization is cells when a group of cells when a group of cells combines what we are calling it group of cells combines to form tissues yes a group of cells combines to form tissues a group of tissues combines to form organs your heart kidney brain number of organs are there inside our body and when a group of organs combines it forms your organ system yes and finally when a group of organ system forms an organism whether it may be a plant or animal yes guys i hope you are understanding yes what is the most important reason we require tissue for organization yes let's take a group of cells we named it as tissues yes next take a group of tissue then it is called as it forms an organ and a group of organ forms an organ system an organ system finally give rise to a organism it may be a plant or animal you can just see over the flow chart here cells form tissues tissues forms your organs organ forms organ system and organ system finally forms your organism this is what the importance of tissues to make the work easier to decrease the workload on a particular cell in case of multicellular organism done yes guys you are done what is the definition of tissues why tissue is is important types of tissue types of tissues so types of tissues means there are generally two main types of tissues yes that is plant tissues and animal tissues yes guys how many types of tissues that is plant tissues and animal tissues yes animal cells combines to form animal tissues and plant cells combine to form your plant tissues understood yes understood or not types first we have discussed about the definition of tissues that is nothing but a group of cells which are similar in structure and 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 perform a particular function reasons yes division of labor is there to keep to decrease the workload on the individual cells and the most important reason for organization for organization cells form tissue tissue form organs organ forms organ system and organ system give rise to an organism it may be plant or animal yes next move on to the types of tissues how many types two types how many types guys two types of tissues plant tissues and animal tissues the cells in case of a group of cells in case of plant is called as your plant tissues and a group of cells in case of animal is called as your animal tissues for the so many classification so many divisions of plant tissues are there animal tissues are there but slowly and gradually we are going to read each and every division so first of all we are going to discuss only about plant tissue so just focus only on plant tissue for now yes so let's move on to plant tissues now full concentration should be on plant tissues now yes 
where it is present, why it is used, what is the necessity of plant tissues. Yes, plant tissues just now I told you. When a group of cells in plant is called as your plant tissue. Yes, when you are taking or framing a group, you are framing a team of plant cells. It is called as your plant tissue. Yes, plant tissues are further divided into two types. Meristematic tissues and permanent tissues. Yes. Yes or no? So this plant tissue, plant tissue, how many types of tissues? Two types, plant tissues and animal tissue. And here we are going to discuss only, only about plant tissue. How many types of plant tissue again? Two types of plant tissue. First one, meristematic tissue. Meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. Meristematic, M-E-R-I-S-T-E-M-A-T-I-C. Meristematic tissue. What it is? Meristematic tissue. And the second one is permanent tissue. How many types of plant tissues are there guys? Two types. What are those? That is your meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. Now forget about permanent tissue. Completely forget about permanent tissue. Just, just, just focus only on meristematic tissue. In this video, we are going to discuss only about meristematic tissue first. Yes? Remember, plant cells, two types. Plant cells, sorry, plant tissues, two types. Meristematic tissues and your permanent tissues. Yes? Today, only, only, only about meristematic tissues. Yes? A group of meristematic cells called meristematic tissue. Yes? What is meristematic? A different type of word, a difficult terminology for you. Meristematic. What does it mean? Meristematic means continuously dividing cells. Yes. Continuous means the group of cells. The group of cells which divides continuously, which divides rapidly. Yes. And such cells frame a group. And that frame of, that group of cells are called meristematic tissue. The cells which continuously divides. The cells which continuously divides. And the group of such cells are called as your meristematic tissues. They are very active cells. They continuously divide and divide and divide and divide. Yes guys, what is meristematic? Continuously dividing cells. A group of continuously dividing cells. We have discussed cells always grows on dividing and dividing and dividing. Cell division takes place. Why cell division takes place? For our growth. Yes, mental development, physical development. Cell division is necessary for the survival of life. Yes. So this meristematic tissue. What is meristematic? The cells, the group of cells which divides continuously. A group of cells and that cells continuously divides are called meristematic tissues. Yes, a group of continuously dividing cells are called meristematic tissues. A group of continuously dividing cells are called meristematic tissue and these cells are very active. They goes on dividing and dividing. First point. A second thing, occurrence, where it is present. We know it is present in plant. But in plant, where it is present? Yes, in plant, where it is present? For example, just see this picture over here. See this diagram over here. Yes, suppose this is a general stem. Yes, guys. This is the general stem. Okay. So, First see this, just below the ground, just below the ground, what we used to find in plants? Roots, obviously. Just below the ground surface, roots are present. Yes, clear? 
just below the ground in case of plants roots are present just above the ground surface stem is present yes or no just above below the ground roots are present above the ground what it is present stem and above the stem this part above the stem this one is called shoot guys this one is called shoot yes in a typical plant below the ground roots are present above the ground stem is present yes and just above the stem you just say bark na just above the stem shoot is present what is shoot we generally say shoot and stem are same thing but it's not yes just above the stem shoot is present understood first understood the structure just below the ground level we are getting the roots and just above the ground stem is present and above the stem shoots are present just above the stem shoot is present this part is called as your shoot this part is called as your shoot this part is called as your shoot guys and below these are called roots and this part is called as your stem yes below the ground roots above the ground stem above the stem shoot root stem shoot so where this meristematic tissue is present it is present in the growing regions one most important thing you have to remember is that meristematic tissue is responsible for growth of the plant whether it may be upside of the plant in the shoot or stem or in the down towards the your roots remember remember one most important thing is the first thing you have to remember is that meristematic tissue is a group of continuously dividing cells yes done next next thing is that this meristematic tissue is responsible for the growth of the plant yes we have seen a seed seed grows to form a plant and plant grows to form a big huge tree how this growth happens it's all because of this meristematic tissue meristematic tissue is responsible for the growth in the size of the plant whether in the width also and also in the longitudinal growth also width yes motapa jise bolte hain yes and length of the plant remember the first point you have to write in meristematic tissue is that these are continuously dividing cells the second important thing is that they are responsible for the growth either longitudinally or in the grit grit means width yes they help in growing the root, your roots and the growth of the stem and the shoot so meristematic tissue is responsible for what guys for growth meristematic tissue is responsible for the growth of roots and stem and shoot got it now where it is present it is present in the growing region where does the plant grow from the stem parts and from roots roots are also growing or not roots are growing the growth of the roots are because of the meristematic tissues and the growth of the stem is also because of the because of the meristematic tissues understood so where it is present in the growing regions in the root region your meristematic tissue is present and in the shoot region in the tip of the shoot region also meristematic tissues are present what is the main use of meristematic tissues it helps in the growth of the growth of the roots and growth of the shoots yes so where it is present it is present in the roots and present in the shoot where is shoot present above the stem yes above and where is stem present above the ground roots are present below the ground got it understood or not yes so 
the growing regions of where it is present growing regions of the plant it is present in the growing regions of the plant root and shoot root here also meristematic tissue present in the shoot the meristematic tissue is present now what is the shape of these tissues they may be spherical in shape they may be rectangle in shape and they are oval in shape yes what is the shape of meristematic tissue it is spherical in shape oval in shape and rectangular in shape got it now intercellular spaces are absent in case of your meristematic tissues i told you meristematic tissue means group of cells yes this is a group of cells yes or no these are group of cells what is this new term intercellular spaces do you find any space or gap in between the cells definitely no yes there is any space is there any space in between the cells suppose this is a meristematic tissues and meristematic tissues com uh, comprises of cells continuously dividing cells is there any gap there no gaps are there no space are there that space is called as your intercellular spaces so these intercellular spaces are absent in case of your meristematic tissue understood yes or no first thing intercellular means the space is the gap yes the space the gap which is present in between the cells that means the cells are tightly packed yes no gaps and no space are there so intercellular spaces are absent next vacuoles are absent we have read in our first lesson vacuoles yes vacuoles what is the use of vacuoles it helps in storage we read it in here vacuoles that vacuoles are absent because its work is only to divide without knowing anything it will go on dividing the cell will continuously divide i told you yes it's a group of continuously uh, dividing cells the cells will continuously divide there is nothing to store yes so that's why no vacuole is there yes so vacuoles are absent in case of your in case of your meristematic tissues cytoplasm is dense cytoplasm we read inside the cell yes inside the cell the jelly and fluid like structure is called cytoplasm so the cytoplasm is very very dense here and the cell wall the cell wall of meristematic tissues are made up of cellulose a carbohydrate made up of cellulose yes and the nuclei since it's a group of cells yes definitely it has cytoplasm and nucleus we have read in our last lesson that cell has got cytoplasm cell has got cell organelle cell has got vacuole cell has got your uh, cell wall nuclei everything yes so here in this case the cell wall is made 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 up of cellulose and nucleus is there yes definitely nucleus is there but the nucleus is prominent prominent means what guys very clearly visible yes the nuclei is very very prominent prominent means it's clearly visible next understood up to this understood what is the characteristics of meristematic tissue i want to repeat once more meristematic tissue first plant uh, your uh, tissue divided into how many types two types plant tissues and animal tissues so plant tissues plant tissues may divided into two types your meristematic tissues and permanent tissue we will focus only 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 about your meristematic tissues what does meristematic tissue means for you a group of dividing cells yes a group of continuously dividing cells are called as meristematic tissue done so where it is present it is present in the growing region growing region means shoot region and root region yes plants grow upwards and downwards yes in that growing region and that too is shoot region i told you which one is shoot shoot means above the stem and roots you know 
Yes. So this is present in the growing region of plants, your roots and shoot areas. And then shape. What is the shape of that uh, uh, meristematic tissues? It is spherical, oval and rectangular in shape. Next. Intercellular spaces between the cells of the meristematic tissue is absent. I told you what is intercellular spaces. The cells are closely packed. No gaps are there. So intercellular spaces are absent. Since it is continuously dividing without knowing anything. Yes, it doesn't have a vacuum to store anything. So vacuums are absent. Yes, cells have got cytoplasm and the cytoplasm in this case is very very dense. Cell wall is made up of cellulose done and the nuclei which is present in the cells of the meristematic tissues are clearly visible are very very prominent and the cells are very very active in case of your meristematic tissues. Understood guys? Up to this you are clear? Yes, what are meristematic tissue? You are clear? Now, again guys, these meristematic tissues are divided into three main types. Yes, these meristematic tissues are again divided into three main types. They are your epical meristem. Yes, I am speaking it. Epical meristem, A-P-I. C A L apical meristem done next lateral meristem yes lateral meristem yes apical meristem lateral meristem and intercalary meristem how many types of meristematic tissue guys three types of meristematic tissues yes don't get confused yes we are only focusing on meristematic tissues today only Meristematic tissues again, again, again has got three types. Again has got three, three, three types. What are those? First one, epical meristem. Note it down. Epical meristem. A P I C A L. Epical meristem. Second one is your intercalary meristem. I N T E R C A L A R Y intercalary meristem. Yes. The third one is your lateral meristem. L A T E R A L lateral meristem. Understood? Yes or no? Tissues, plant cells, animal cells. Plant cells divided into two meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. Now, meristematic tissues are again divided into three types. Epical meristem, intercalary meristem and of course, lateral meristem. So, epical meristem, where it is present? At the tip of the shoot. I told you, shoot, above the stem. At the tip, this area. Yes, at the tip of the suit epical meristem is present which helps in the growth of the suit longitudinally yes it helps in the growth of the suit longitudinally the first one epical meristem where it is present tip of the suit note it down epical meristem present in the tip of the suit tip of the this is the suit yes guys and this is the tip. And the tip of the suit, apical meristem is present, which helps in the growth of the plant longitudinally. Quite opposite the second one, lateral meristem. Lateral meristem. Lateral meristem. It helps in increasing the grit of the plant. G I R T H. Grit. Bark. You have seen the bark of the plant or bark of the tree. Yes, it increases in breadth or not. Width or not. The increase in the width of the plant. Yes, the increase in the width of the plant is all because of your lateral meristem. Yes, width. Yes, your breadth. 
yes apical remember guys apical meristem is present in the tip region tip of the shoot and helps in the growth of the plant longitudinally your lateral meristem helps in increasing the width of the plant yes it is present just above your yes bark area it is present near the bark area and the third one is your intercalary meristem what is intercalary a new terminology intercalary most of you have seen the nodes in the stem of the plant nodes gant bolte hain jise yes nodes nodes yes you can see this from and these nodes are generally present at the base of the leaf leaf in the base of the leaf you will find the node yes and from that node leaf arises so what is this node the node is there this is a node is there and from the node yes where it is present node is present note it down node is present at the base of the leaf node is present at the base of the leaf and the distance the distance between the two nodes the distance between the two this is node one suppose and this is node two and the distance between these two nodes are called inter nodes understood first thing nodes are present at the base of the leaf done yes and the distance between the two nodes and the distance between the two nodes is called as your inter nodes inter nodes what is inter nodes note it down the distance between the two nodes is called inter nodes and this intercalary meristem is present in the inter node area yes where is intercalary meristem present in the inter node region what is inter nodes the distance between two nodes what is node node is present at the base of the leaf understood guys once again how many types of meristematic tissues are there guys yes 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 come on three what are those apical meristem apical meristem lateral meristem and intercalary meristem apical meristem apex region tip region apex and tip of the shoot apical meristem is present at the tip or apex of the shoot where is shoot present above the stem yes apical meristem helps in the growth of the plant longitudinally got it apical meristem present at the apex or tip of the shoot lateral meristem lateral meristem helps in increasing the girth or width of the plant yes it is present near the bark areas it helps in increasing the width of the plant got and the third one is your intercalary meristem intercalary meristem intercalary meristem is present in the inter node region what is inter node the, the distance between the two nodes the distance between two nodes is called inter nodes and intercalary meristem is present in the inter node region and what is a node node is generally present at the base of the leaf and from nodes only new leaves comes out understood so this is what the different types of your meristematic tissues so what we read today what is tissue tissues importance we have read how many types of tissues plant tissues and animal tissues next move on to plant tissues how many types of plant tissues we read two what are those they are your meristematic tissues and permanent tissues so today we discussed only about your meristematic tissues which is a group of dividing cells they are very active cells intercellular spaces are absent vacuoles are absent yes and their cell, their tissue is spherical oval and rectangular in space 
and it is present in the root region and shoot region. How many types of meristematic tissues? Three types. Apical meristem, intercalary meristem and lateral meristem. Apical meristem, tip of the suit. Lateral meristem, bark to increase the width. Intercalary meristem, internodes. Internodes, distance between two nodes. Nodes, present at the base of the leaf. So guys, I hope you have understood today's class. Please once again go through the video and check it and listen to it very carefully and note it down. This will be very useful for you guys. So we will soon meet with another topic that is permanent tissues. So until then, take care and revise. See you.